Hello and herzlich willkommen. Hello and welcome to Hygromatic. My name is Helge Kröger. And today I would like to demonstrate the easy maintenance of a heater steam humidifier from the Flexline series. In beginning with the maintenance, the water supply must first be shut off. Secondly, the residual water in the steam cylinder needs to be drained. That can easily be done by pressing down the control switch to position 2 and keeping it pressed. Now the pump has pumped the water out of the steam cylinder. The steam cylinder is now empty. And next I have to make sure that the unit is disconnected from the power supply and is secured from being restarted to avoid injuries. After the unit has been disconnected from water and electricity, I can remove the housing cover by opening the two lock bolts here and pull the cover off. I use a normal slotted screwdriver, which fits into the opening here. After the unit has been opened, I must check that no voltage is present. This is very important. By using a normal voltmeter to verify no voltage is present. I will check the connection cables at the main contactor and check all phases for voltage. There is no voltage here. And further check if the separately connected mainboard control is not carrying any voltage either. Therefore, I check this here. Here too there isn't any, and I can begin maintenance without danger. Before the steam cylinder can be removed, the hose clamp for the cylinder flush and the hose for the water level control device must be unscrewed. After unscrewing the hose clamps, I can remove the hoses and place them to the side. Next, I have to disconnect the steam cylinder from the unit electrically by pulling this green plug. For the last step, to remove the steam cylinder, I have to loosen this clip, the steam hose adapter clip. Simply pull it off and pull up the steam hose adapter a little, together with the steam hose. Once this is done, I can attach the steam hose adapter clip on top. You have both hands free, so that I can easily dismantle the steam cylinder. I do this by simply turning and lifting it. I can remove this steam cylinder very easily now. Then I can start with the cylinder maintenance. On the upper part of the steam cylinder you can see the connections for the heater elements, in this case three heater elements, the thermo switch, which triggers when the steam cylinder overheats, and the connection plug. This connector differs from the standard line only in that the connector is grey. The assignments are absolutely the same. For disassembly, we use a standard slotted screwdriver, lift under the clamps, just hold on to the clamps a little so that they don't jump out, and go all around. You can see the steam cylinder separating. Now you can pull the two halves apart. You can already see the mineral buildup here. That can now be discarded. I'll empty it out. 
To remove the coarse particles from the cylinder wall, you can use a standard scraper or spatula and remove the coarse particles. Please also clean the cylinder strainer that we see here. The holes, of course, must be clear, so the cylinder water can be pumped out completely. In this case, the upper half has three heater elements. If deposits are found here, then take the shaft of a screwdriver, knock on the heater elements carefully, so the coarse particles fall off. If the particles can't be loosened, you can use a descaling agent. Citric acid has worked quite well. Please don't use citric acid in concentrations above 10%. You can take a container, mix your citric acid or descaling agent here, and place the upper half of the steam cylinder into it and let it descale. Please make sure that the connectors from the heater element do not come into contact with water or acid. Then allow it to soak according to the manufacturer's instructions and then remove the steam cylinder from the acid. Here you can see a flushing nozzle which comes fitted in the flex line and is optionally available for the standard line. This must also be kept free of residue. You can also see it here from the other side. There's a small hole for the flushing nozzle. This must also be kept clear. Next, the cylinder flange o-ring is removed. I use a small screwdriver and lever behind the o-ring carefully because I could otherwise scratch the surface of the seal. I lift this o-ring out of there. This O-ring must now be replaced. You will find an O-ring set included with each unit. Sets can also be purchased from Hygromatic. The O-ring set contains this cylinder flange, sealing ring, and further O-rings for the cylinder base and the steam hose adapter. Before I use this new O-ring, the surface of the seal must be absolutely clean. I use a small cloth, works quite well, and clean the surface of the seal. And check if possible chipping is present, whether it can really close tightly. That is the case. I take a new O-ring from my O-ring set. and put it on the lower half of the cylinder, in the groove. Afterwards, the surface seal of the upper half of the cylinder must be cleaned. To do this, you can also use a cloth and wipe once all around it and make sure that there is no damage. Both cylinder halves are then ready for reassembly. As you can see here, there are two flaps. The two must touch each other when aligning the cylinder halves. You can also adjust the steam cylinder a little bit. In this case, the two flaps are not aligned with each other. You can turn these two guide parts a little on the sides. And if they sit exactly above each other, the position is correct. I will start to reattach the clamps. Turn the whole cylinder by 180 degrees. 
and attach the second clamp. Then turn 90 degrees. Attach the third one. Now I can attach the remaining clamps. Should you ever lose a clamp, you will find three replacement clamps in the O-ring set. You don't have to attach them additionally. These three clamps are only intended as replacements. Before I fit the steam cylinder back into the unit, I'll take a look at the cable connection here. Every single screw of the cable connection I tighten. Now that the cylinder has been serviced, I take a look at all the hoses in the steam compartment. I have to make sure that the hoses are still flexible, if they have hardened. You can check by kneading them a bit. Notice if they have become brittle and porous. That is not the case in this case. Next, I look into the cylinder base, whether mineral deposits have formed in the base and have to be removed. If this is the case, the cylinder base will have to be dismantled and the blowdown pump must be cleaned. If the blowdown pump needs to be cleaned, there is a separate video you can reference that we made available on our website. Here is the water level control device. It is maintenance free. To check if it still works, I simply disconnect this hose after I have loosened the hose clip. And I also loosen the hose directly at the cylinder base. I'll take a look at this hose too, whether there are mineral deposits in it, which I could possibly just knead out. Next, I will take a look at the water level control device, which is here. This water level control device must have a clear inlet. If it is clogged, in very rare cases, then take a screwdriver and push into it to loosen fine mineral deposits within. That's all you have to do with a water level control device. But if, in the worst case, it is blocked and water can no longer enter, then you have to dismantle the water level control device. By loosening these four screws. I now have the water level control in my hand. Now I can remove the shielding plate and open the tank of the water level control. Remove the O-ring. If there should be any deposits in this container, just take a screwdriver. And then scrape off the deposits. Also, please scratch around the connection. Then take a new O-ring. And please put it on the lid here. And close the container again. And then please make sure to put the shielding plate back on again. A further maintenance point is the inspection of the pipe bend. It is located here. To dismantle it, I simply unscrew the screw here and pull the pipe bend over to me. The pipe bend, which makes the water that the blowdown pump drains out of the steam cylinder flow out, is redirected here via this pipe bend. And I must make sure that this small vent, seen quite well here, is free of residue. 
I get myself a small screwdriver and push this hole clear, that there are no deposits in it, so a smooth drainage is ensured. Next, I check the sieve in the inlet solenoid valve. I unscrew this nut. Take pointed or flat pliers and simply pull out the sieve, which is found under here, and check if there is any residue, any mineral deposits, and clean it under running water. Before the service steam cylinder can be reinstalled in the unit, I must first remove the old O-ring, which is still attached to the lower half of the cylinder, and replace it with a new one. Before I insert the O-ring into the cylinder base, I check if there are any particles in it, remove them if necessary, and clean the groove here as well. Then I take a new O-ring and insert it, just push it in. The old O-ring from the steam hose adapter must also be removed. To do so, I lever under the O-ring with a small screwdriver and pull it out. This O-ring will now be replaced by a new one. The O-ring is simply inserted into the groove. Then I take the steam cylinder and just set it in by inserting it into the bottom of the cylinder base first and tilt it a bit and turn. Please make sure all cables are unhindered, that they aren't squished anywhere. And the position of the steam cylinder is correct if this sticker, a tension hot surface, is seen. Then I remove the clip and then press the steam hose adapter with the steam hose onto the steam cylinder. Finally, I re-secure the steam hose adapter with the clip. After I reinstalled the steam cylinder, I can reattach the hoses, one for the cylinder flush and one for the water level control device, and reattach the hose clamps. After that, I reconnect the steam cylinder to the unit electrically. In principle, this completes the maintenance and we can start the first test run. By switching the water supply back on, supplying the unit with power. If this is the case, simply switch on the unit. Let it run for 5 to 10 minutes and please check for any leakage, especially in the area of the cylinder flange, in the cylinder base, and of course up around the steam hose adapter. If everything is alright after 10 minutes, please also run the pump a little for a short time. And please observe here whether any leakage is seen. The maintenance manual can be filled out before we put the housing cover back on. So that the next person knows when the last maintenance was carried out. And please reset the service interval according to the operating instructions. The housing cover can then be replaced. It can be locked. And the maintenance is finished. Many thanks for watching.